All right, we've got a new blog post where we get two new characters and two reworks. We're going to rework to Jessica Jones and Captain Marvel. And then we've got Spider-Woman and Nico. No She-Hulk. We've got an A-Force team. We've got a some changes yeah, that are a little bit concerning to the Strike Pass, which is not that exciting. I mean, Misty. And then we're going to get two very important blitzes. Uh, Wong and Silver Samurai, which are going to run along the same time as the Agatha Blitz. A lot of people are not happy with the, uh, <laughs> I called it Agatha Blitz. That was a slip. The Agatha event. Yeah, it's all about blitzing. And, you know, I was just looking over at it. People are not happy about that Agatha event. I understand. Uh, if you blitz like a, a billion, like your mind's out, you might be able to get a four star. Uh, this is for a uh, roster that has like 195, 196 characters unlocked. Looks like you can get a four star unlock according to the spreadsheet here created by Yuletide Bringer. And that's it, doing eight rotations a day, which is insane. If you want a three star, you still have to do four and a half complete rotations a day. And what I mean by complete rotations, that's literally win four, lose one, win four, lose one. You just have to have the characters unlocked. You can do that at difficulty one. You don't have to take that into 8.0. Win four, lose one. Hit win four, lose one. You, as long as you have the characters unlocked, that'll work. So uh, it's it's nobody's really a big fan of this event. It seems more of a an offer than an event, if you ask me, because a lot of the milestones are unachievable without spending money. And uh, I think it, it doesn't seem very agreeable. A-Force of Nature, greetings, Commander. Introducing the A-Force team. Uh, the battle for Alliance supremacy is about to heat up for the upcoming arrival of Alliance War, new weapon of Helicarrier Destruction A-Force. Uh, it looks like it might counter Young Avengers. We'll have to see. I'm not entirely sure what team this is going to counter. This new team will be a war offense scalpel capable of picking apart many of the top war defensive with precision. It'll feature four members for now. So I, that, that's kind of like the soon TM. Does, you know, because I think She-Hulk is the one that uh, a lot of people are like, what's going on? Why isn't she a part of the A-Force? Uh, is Are they saving it for between now and uh, the, the patch release? Or is it like going to be like X-Factor where someday we'll get a fifth X-Factor? And also, I want as we go through these kits, uh, I want to keep in mind that we're, they're probably selling us the characters that are going to be used in the next Scourge event. And so uh, a lot of things about this right here kind of feels like Dark Hunters, you know, war offense team, two new characters, two old characters. And maybe this is going to be for the next node five and 10 for the next horseman. We'll just keep that in mind. So four members for now. I don't know what that means exactly, including longtime best friends, Captain Markle, and Jessica Jones. They're both receiving upgrades and we've got the rework information here. Not really that much done to Captain Marvel except for stat boost. Jessica Jones gets a, a pretty nice improvement. Upcoming version 6.1 release, updating their base stats and performing new synergies with A-Force allies. Um, you know, I, I, I'm going to guess that we're probably getting the patch the first week of next month. So maybe about 10 days from now, if I were to guess. Let's make the fresh faces of A-Force Spider-Woman. Jessica Drew. Uh, was just seven years old when she contracted uranium poison from her father's genetic experiments on spiders. Her father saved Jessica's life by injecting her with an experimental spider-derived serum and suspending her hibernation in a genetic accelerator. Jessica spent decades in stasis, receiving subliminal education via tapes. And when she finally awakened, fully cured, Jessica had only aged into her team. She formed new powers, including superhuman strength, agility reflexes, and wall-crawling abilities. Jessica's body also produced bioelectricity that she could discharge through her hands and a pheromone that elicited fear, attraction, and repulsion in others. Alone in the world and struggling to come to terms with the powers, Jessica was recruited by an underground criminal organization. She was trained to be an expert assassin by Taskmaster and she and assigned to kill SHIELD director Nick Fury. However, during the mission, Jessica learned that from Fury the true nature of her employers, which led to her abandoning the organization. Uh, when Jessica's original memories uh, were eventually restored, Jessica adopted the name Spider-Woman and became one of the Earth's most valuable heroes. Spider-Woman swings into the A-Force team as a blaster with high damage and speed. In addition to painful attacks, she brings a good deal of damage mitigation. Uh, I actually kind of like the kit. It's kind of better than just giving them evade. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting mechanic the way it works. I kind of like it. A-Force allies, by the way, of her passive ability. Pheromone fighter. And speaking of pheromones... You can see her pheromones in action during an alliance or offense battle where she can lower the accuracy 
who possess offense down. So she can lower the accuracy by 25%, uh, which won't affect some characters. Uh, there's some characters that have a very high accuracy, like Kate Bishop and, uh, you know, the blind characters, if you will. That would be like Heimdall and Daredevil and Cyclops have high accuracy. It's all on msf.gg. But she lowers them by 25% who possess offense down when Spider-Woman is above 30% health and has three or more A-Force allies. And this is in war, of course, so this is not everywhere. Keep in mind that Spider-Woman starts an alliance war offense managed by applying offense down, which has three or more A-Force allies. So this is accurate ability to be powerful. So the first thing I noticed right here is that she is not mystic, although Nico is mystic. Oh my God, I have no mystic gear, but we finally get bio, so... Uh, we're probably flushed with bio gear. We're going to go to the passive first and work backwards. On spawn, apply defense up for two turns to self and all A-Force allies. On turn heal for 20% of this character's max health. Gain focus per A-Force ally. Gain 10% max health. And then the A-Force allies get that as well. Now, this is some of the war office specific abilities right here. So not defense, war offense. On spawn, if this character has three more A-Force allies, apply offense down for two turns to all enemies. A war offense gain 10,000 resistance against offense down. And then A-Force allies also get that. And then on war offense, if this character has three or more A-Force allies above 30% health, lower accuracy by 25% for all enemies with offense down. So that's kind of like uh, just giving them a, like a dodge chance, but it's it's just a different way of doing it. I think it's kind of clever. Now, her, uh, now I want to read these kits and it, with the idea of thinking about controlling like nodes in uh, the Scourge Pestilent events five and 10, because I, it kind of feels like that kind of kit in a lot of ways. Energy cost four six, attack primary target for 360% damage and 50% damage per negative effect. Flip two positive effects and see there's no war offense stuff here. This is just normal kit stuff. Flip two positive effects on primary target, extend the duration of all negative effects by one, can't be dodged, and then war offense can't be blocked. So that right there, you know, is a lot of utility and control, right? Then her her special, 6-6, six, six, goes off turn one. This applies ability block, attack primary target for damage, apply ability block for one turn, heal block for two turns, and offense down for two turns, and then you chain for the other turns, applying heal block. And I think this might be important because we're going to talk about uh, Nico's kit and the potentially for maybe countering heroes for her. We'll have to see the you know, one of the missing pieces in that kit was the heal block component with trauma. But here we have apply heal block for two turns and offense downs for two turns. So it's really going to come down if there's going to be enough focus for this to apply because heroes for her gets what 175% extra focus per each charged. Oh, it's kind of a mess. Gain extra focus for this attack. Attack is unavoidable and can't be blocked. And then, then on war offense. You get extra damage and can't be a counter attack. Again, right here, we've got flipping negative effects and extending. Then right here, we've got ability block and heal block. And then the basic attack applies defense down. So like you've got these a bit, you know, a lot of choices on her kit to, you know, in a, in, in a, in a scourge situation to be very useful. A lot of control right there. You're going to have to choose wisely, right? Because each one of those abilities does something very different and unique. And I, I think that's interesting. Let's move on to Nico. And unfortunately, Nico is Mystic. Marvel Mystic Force. Oh my goodness. I, I have no Mystic gear. And I just unlocked Dormammu, which made it even worse. All we've had is Mystics on Mystics on Mystics. I mean, even Eternals and Cloak and Dagger and then Dark Hunters and now Darkhold and Morgan and all that. My goodness. Every year, Nico parents would join five other couples at a charity event. But when your Nico and several other kids spied on their parents to see what they're up to, Nico just saw discover her parents speaking a strange enchantment and sacrificing an innocent girl during a mysterious group ritual. My goodness. After recovering the truth about her parents, that they were super villains, Nico ran away from home. She was soon found by her parents, revealed that they were dark sorcerers. When Nico's mother attempted to stab her with a staff, this is horrible. The staff of one, Nico's body absorbed it. Nico soon discovered that, like her parents, she was a sorcerer. The staff of one empowered Nico with the ability to cast spells verbally, but she could cast a only cast a given spell once. After the demise of her parents, and now empowered with her new abilities, Nico became a superhero. She joins forces with the likes of A Force, Cloak and Dagger, Young Avengers, Avengers X Men, and Doctor Strange in her many adventures. Nico joins her A Force allies as a controller. She feels high health and speed. 
Her kit features the necessary tools to help shut down some of the top war defense, as well as additional health and positive effects from her A-Force teammates. As a nod to Nico's ability to only cast a spell once using the Staff of One, her abilities feature a bit of fun by applying a random positive effect when using her basic special ultimate abilities for the first time in a battle. So it's kind of interesting. We're going to go over that. Again, Mystic. My goodness, Mystic. We're going to go to her passive first and then work backwards on spawn. And this is going to be tricky. And this this, this is always frustrating, uh, getting this to work correctly. Uh, because a lot of times we don't have control of who is going to be the highest health and the highest, the lowest health because of red stars, right? And um, that's a problematic experience sometimes. On spawn, apply safeguard immunity and death proof to the highest health A force ally and immunity and death proof to the lowest health ally. Gain focus and drain and then apply the same to A force allies and then they also get max health boost right there. So let's talk about her ultimate, which is 8 8, which is. You know, one, you know, one, one, that's a high cooldown, really high energy cost. And uh, now Jessica Jones does give out ability to the energy to the team. So, uh, you know, which is kind of random though. Tack all enemies for damage and flip the following positive effects and negative, negative effects. And, and remember, she's going to be going early in the match because she has high speed. Deflect, speed up, and defense up. So she's going to flip all of that. On war offense, if this character has three or more A-Force allies, apply trauma for two turns and disrupt it for two turns to the primary target, the enemy with the highest health, and an enemy with the highest damage. So you're going to have to guess, you know, how that plays out. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be effective against Heroes for Hire because the Heroes for Hire requires pretty much disrupted plus heal block. No, no, no. Trauma plus heal block. Uh, for it to, to clear down the charges. So you, you're going to have to be dependent on Nico to apply the trauma, but it's kind of weird how that sets up. And uh, and then also, then then, then uh, Spider-Woman's going to have to go to apply the heal block. All right, well, maybe that'll work. Maybe that we'll, we'll have to do some testing. It's hard to say. Uh, but this, you know, there's problems with this, you know, having to know what your opponent does. I mean, like right now, in uh you know in a hero for hire match when you use dark hunters you know it's they four of the highest health heroes start off with blind right so that should be everybody but luke cage but people have intentionally kept their their iron fist low so that luke cage gets the blind and iron fist doesn't and he wrecks somebody and destroys the team from working i mean there's all kinds of weird stuff like that right after the use of this ability after the first time during a match, randomly choose one of the following effects. Gain two, evade, apply two, deflect yourself and all allies, revive a dead eye with 20% base health. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to play out. I'd love to test this. A war offense, gain extra focus for this attack, and then war offense can't be dodged, counterattacked, or blocked. I'm not really sure what to make of that, to be honest with you. I'm sure the comment section will let me know. Energy costs, occult bloodletting, 5-5. Five, five. So this can go off turn one also. Attack primary and adjacent targets for 250% damage. Apply two bleed. Gain two regeneration. After the use of this ability after the first time during match, randomly choose one of the following effects. Disrupted to the primary target. Gain death proof. Apply two counters to adjacent allies. Very random. War offense. This attack can't be blocked. Uh, I'm thinking this would probably will be a Young Avengers counter. We'll have to see how it goes. And then her basic attack. Uh, 270% damage. Clear all heal block and stun from the alley with the highest damage. Call that alley to attack the primary target. After use of this ability, first time during a match, randomly choose one of the following effects. Apply bleed to the primary target, gain defense up, or heal the most injured ally or self for this character's max health. Now, these random abilities kind of, you know, kind of worry me about RNG because I'm thinking about, you know, the, the, the Web Warriors dodge mechanic and how to get perfect RNG on nodes 5 and 10 requires doing the nodes over and over and over again. And I wonder if it's going to come down to that as well, where it's like, oh, you're going to pray that you get the right negative effect to apply. Highest attack probably will be Captain Marvel. From what I see, we'll have to see. Now, there are re minor reworks and touch-ups to Jessica Jones and Captain Marvel. More more to Jessica Jones and her special ability. Both of them get base stat increases right there. And then, uh, it's kind of hard to read this, but you can see that anything that is in bold was added. So... Basically, they added the A-Force tag to her basic attack to give one energy to her. Then on her special, which is kind of nice, gained a bunch of new effects. They add the A-Force tag, 
But then they also add a barrier mechanic. Bury yourself and all A-Force allies by 20%. This is on Jessica Jones special. This character's max health. Bury all allies for 10% of this character's max health. Then apply defense up for max of three turns to self and all three A-Force allies and then immunity to self and A-Force allies. That kind of makes that a special ability uh, very uh, quite a bit more important. And then her ultimate uh, now will hit adjacent targets. So before it just hit a primary target, adjacent targets for 400% damage and clear all positive effects. So basically it's going to be doing you know, potentially instead of just hitting one target, it'll hit three targets. That's a huge improvement. Then her passives have a lot of A Force synergy, max health to her and A Force armor to her and A Force gain resistance. Defender A Force allies gain resistance. And then right here on war offense, spawn on spawn, fill speed bar by 5% plus 5% speed bar per A Force ally. So uh, you know, if there's that could be up to 40% turn meter at the beginning of battle. Now, Captain Marvel didn't get a lot of changes. She do get, does get a health damage, armor focus, and resistance boost. Um, but a lot of her other new abilities is just on her passive, uh, where uh, you know how she's got that. Um, like she does her ultimate on the turn one, which is not related to her passive, and then she does that AOE, that second hit. It's it's going to be improved. Uh, it says attack all enemies for 150% damage and clear evade. It never had that clear evade. In war, if this character has two more A-Force allies, this attack cannot be blocked or dodged. So that's talking about that AOE uh, that at the end of turn right here while in binary. Then we also have uh, some other synergy here with A-Force where they gain max health. And that about wraps it up for the team. So we're going to have to do some testing and see what this team is actually going to be useful for. Also, a lot of people are like, where's the fifth one? Maybe we'll get the fifth one. Uh, and then who are we going to use as the fifth one? You know, it's kind of like Dark Hunters, right? Uh, you know, if I'm playing against Heroes for Hire, I like to use Namor. If I'm playing up against uh, Young Avengers uh, with my Dark Hunters, I like to use Hela. And maybe those strategies will come out on who will be the fifth on this team. I'm not really sure. Now, the Strike Pass. Strike Pass is Misty Knight, which I'm not really a fan of because I think a lot of people have Misty Knight already at seven stars. Uh, boy, the, if it's not bad enough making characters not farmable, uh, Strike Pass was kind of a way of getting new shards, and Misty Knight is not that exciting in my opinion. Now, it just still has the 1,000 cores, so and there's going to be a costume. It is what it is. Elite Store Morbius will be coming to the Elite Store on Thursday, the 28th. We'll see that. And then weekly news, we're going to have the Phoenix Legendary event. And then on Monday, we're going to have the Wong Blitz, the second Wong Blitz. Typically, new characters are on Thursday. So this has been, it's been a long time. Someone in my chat said the last time they've done a Monday was like Iceman. So that goes back a long time. It does line up with the, the Agatha Milestone event, which is basically just a Blitz event. Blitz, 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 Blitz. So we'll be able to double dip on the Agatha event and Wong Blitz starting on Monday. And then Thursday, another character that a lot of people probably don't have at uh, seven uh, yellow stars will be Silver Samurai. So both of these Blitzes I will, I'm interested in uh, doing, you know, for getting the character shards and uh, participating in the Agatha event. So, um there you go. That is the blog post for the day. And again, you know, I, a lot of this was what my chat said. How do you feel about the blog post? Yeah, 57% of the people said they're too busy blitzing. <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching. Keep on giving.